Hello everybody, I have an announcement to make which is sad and that is I'm currently going through university exams and that means that I have much much uh, less time than usual to actually make these videos. So what you will see me doing as I did last week is easier videos that actually require less time to set up and hopefully I will maintain uh, a regular publishing schedule, maybe three to four videos a week but um, I'm, I have exams and uh, if I have to study more more than I will cut with uh, some of the videos set. So what I'm going to do today is I'm starting a series on actually commenting of Baby Vogue's videos. Uh, why is that? Well, uh, uh, I actually think that uh, commenting on uh, well, of on what sorry other YouTubers say about KD Plasma is actually useful because uh, often they criticize Plasma, and I can take that as a starting point to give you some insights on why KD Plasma is the way it is. Not to mean that it, you shouldn't criticize KD Plasma, you should actually, and it's actually a way to explain why. Uh, those criticisms are valid or maybe invalid in the first place. However, most uh, Linux YouTubers are very professional and don't criticize Plasma much at all. And one YouTuber that does in a very unprofessional way, uh, in my opinion at least, is Baby Vogue. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting a series actually on uh, criticizing Baby Vogue, criticizing KD Plasma, which I think is only fair. I mean, in the past, Baby Vogue has been very d disrespectful to KD developers as a whole so I think that if I uh, comment on some of his videos uh, correcting him when, when he's wrong and actually saying okay KD Plasma is indeed wrong in, the, uh, in this case when he's right and Baby Vogue is sometimes right uh, I think that might be useful and for you to actually gain some insights on why KD Plasma is the way uh, it is and the first video that I actually missed uh, completely when this was published uh, some weeks ago is about me so this one is actually fair it's about the floating panels which I landed so I haven't watched it yet and uh, let's actually see what uh, he says so it's again this tough time you need to congratulate the enemy and every youtuber is an enemy YouTube baby okay, you're my enemy now for his first big contribution the floor why did he say the first big contribution? Like, that wasn't my first big contribution. I had made merge requests before that were even bigger, but okay, I guess. Loading panel option most specifically. Okay, so we're starting with the default panel, that is without floating. And one more thing to notice is that the menu, in every widget really, is floating less too. Yep, that's the default. Now, long tap to enter editing mode, and we open panel options and more options. And what we want is to first set to floating panel. Yep. And we see it, it gets all the available width of the screen, which perhaps isn't what we want. But the maximize panel option is dead, or I don't have idea what it is. It maximizes the panel. Like, that's so clear. Maximize panel. It makes it as wide as possible. If you click maximize panel, it becomes maximize. If you want to make it smaller, I guess it's supposed it's to gonna do use anyway. the arrows now. Anywho, our next move is to set the auto. You need to use the arrows. These little thingies are supposed to, you know, I'm actually planning on changing uh, this aspect of the panel settings to make it easier to use, but ah, come on, <laughs> baby Vogue. Hi, that we can combine it with a persistent panel on top because we most often don't want to get an always visible floating bar. And since the panel is hidden, I don't see why, because I made sure that if uh, the panel is like, always shown and you maximize a window, it becomes a normal panel, so it's perfect. We can also increase its height, maybe on 52 pixels, because 54 gets unnecessary large. Hum, all done I guess? Let's exit edit mode, and we can now enter to our floating panel. Yes. Slightly floating of course, because we don't want to rob much of space in case you set it to always visible. Yeah, you can actually customize how much it should float via plasma theme. So you can do your own plasma theme where it's much more floating. But slightly floating are also the widgets, which is super great. But I'm happy that it thinks they're super great um, because that was not a bug, but uh, I didn't actually want to do that. I'm planning on a patch to actually make uh, dialogues nicely floating, like properly, f properly floating. However, it wasn't done yet, and this was kind of a side effect to the panel taking more space. So I thought, okay, let, let's just go with it. 
Touching the left edge yeah, seems... that is going to be fixed with a new floating dialogues thingy. Super wrong. To be honest, the implementation isn't that good, and falls behind deep end that comes with the same functionality but much more polish. Give me and some And eventually knife. Plasma Panel will get there. Yeah. And besides, it will be unfair to judge on under development software. Yeah. But to be fair, there are currently lots of visual bugs about this, but I mean, super new functionalities, uh, you know. But what I'm gonna judge is K1 that is so impossible awful. Flickering here, but it's not flickering. It's, uh, this is actually quite complex to explain, but w when you draw the panel in KD Plasma, behind the panel, you're also going to draw two effects, which are the blur and uh, the um, contrast effect. Now the blur, we, we don't quite care. You won't even notice, but the desktop, um, I mean, you will notice but it won't cause any visible glitch whereas the contra contrast effect does and the reason it does is that the contrast effect basically draws a white um, uh, plane like a white rectangle let's say underneath the panel to make sure that even if you're using like a completely dark wallpaper you can still use properly uh, you can th still see properly the panel even if the panel is transparent so that's the reasoning of the contrast effect it also does much more. As an example, it takes the dominant color from the wallpaper and makes it much, much uh, more saturated. So it's easier to spot on transparent panels. And it's a pretty, pretty fundamental part of the design of KD Plasma. However, uh, it's this rectangle underneath the panel is sometimes uh, some frames behind the panel itself. So when it's closing, as you can see, the panel is going down. The desktop effect is also going down, but slower. And that means that you can see a uh, one pixel line where you don't have the panel, but you do have the contrast effect, which is a white rectangle. So you see a one pixel uh, white line. That is, uh, of course, a bug that uh, should be fixed. Um, you can immediately opt out uh, if you go into system settings and disable contrast effect. That's something that I usually recommend against because it kind of kills part of the KD Plasma design. But if you really hate that bug, you can opt out. It's so much worse. And the performance with NVIDIA drivers is totally unacceptable for so long, even years. So that was everything for now. Congrats again to the... Thank you, thank you. KD. B by the way, I have a name. <laughs> KD developer and wish him many more contributions in the future. Okay, this was the first video. Second video is this one. It's about checkboxes and ready <laughs> buttons. Hello, baby wogers. And welcome to the baby wog world reality. Hello. And so, as you're well aware, KD is very famous for their unbeatable UX consistency. I'm really happy to hear this because I'm actually currently the consistency goal champion. I'm the guy that make, uh, makes sure that KDE is as consistent as possible. I've done many contributions in the past, but not just me, other uh, developers as well. So KDE is actually in its lat latest release very consistent. And of course, there's always room for improvement, but compared to years ago, it is miles ahead. If only this wasn't sarcasm. <laughs> But I discovered an unacceptable design mistake by the lovely Plasma developers. Lovely. And on this movie, I'm challenging you to figure it out. Are okay, you ready? Let's, let's do this. Please, your full attention is required. So, you have mine. title bar, okay. menu bar, yes. toolbar. Correct. Welcome to the amazing KDE universe. Control and... What do you mean? <laughs> what else did you expect? Move the menu bar to the toolbar. Yes. Some next level design and 80 more additional action. Yeah, that was changed because I mean, it's only the label that actually scares people. If it was like a full menu bar, uh, people wouldn't be scared. And actually we changed it to a more appropriate label, but uh, it's actually a good design. So, huh? but don't be worried for all those. Yeah, it's just because we say the exact number of actions. We removed that, don't worry. What you should only be concerned about is the remote charge at menu. Which everybody uses, obviously. So have a good look at it. Yeah, that looks okay. bad. Okay, <laughs> got it? Let's move on to your challenge. Escape, and escape, and escape, and escape. Y you could just click anywhere. You don't have to escape five times. Escape from the plasma prison, maybe? <laughs> So, control and shift and M to bring the menu bar. Correct. And then we go to settings and window color scheme and yes. observe carefully. Yes, these ones are very good buttons. The other one were checkboxes. So, did you spot the difference with before and the glorious mistake of KDE developers? <sighs> 
To recap, both the checkboxes menu in Dolphin and the radio buttons menu in console were equally ridiculous, so they preserved the UX okay, consistency. Okay, let's actually give a look to this one. So this is um, select remote charge set. Let, let's give it a look. Dolphin menu uh, more. Now it's called more uh, tools select remote charge set. Okay, you have less. Let's select default. Okay, I'm actually not sure what this does at all, but okay, it did something. Let's refresh the view. What if I also select Arabic? Okay, and then I go back and look at here. Default and Arabic are selected at the same time. And the reason why this is checkboxes and not ready by buttons is that you can select multiple remote charge sets at the same time. That was easy to figure out. Like it's the design is not only like, it's correct. What else did you expect? If you can select multiple elements, it's checkboxes. If you can only select one, it's a radio button. That's the whole idea behind those components. So you just did an entire video about a feature complaining that it, it's a bug and it's actually not. It's by design. <sighs> Next one. This is, oh, that blue frame featuring Plasma 5.21 and we're going a bit and in the so, past. And so, in the previous video, Subtit subtitles in Italian are not meant. Okay. You may completely focus on the location bar that now renders on toolbar. So you Beautiful. may miss the work on the sidebar with the bigger padding and some more changes. That makes everything looking yep. more modern. And of course, yeah, those changes were very much needed. I'm very happy about the design of uh, Dolphin nowadays. Of course, we also get hard disk indicators now. They're getting prettier, I think. I mean, they, they were kind of redesigned now. Yeah, now they're slightly better, uh, better spacing and stuff. It's not just one pixel lines anymore. By the way, I'm not sure what things are 5.20 and what 5.21, but I'm on KDE Master now. In any case, we're still getting that stupid blue frame and some more unnecessary separate. Okay, about uh, the stupid blue frame and the unnecessary separators, okay? The stupid blue frame, as he calls it, is uh, currently the only way that we ex actually express that a view is selected. What you see here uh, inside of uh, the blue frame, you can see that it's darker. It's called a view. It uses the view background color. And um, if it's selected, it, it goes blue. Now, uh, generally speaking, KDE, VDG, so visual design, uh, group developers or designers actually agree that this line is too much and there is an ongoing merge request to actually get uh, it out of the window altogether and when baby Vogue did this video we actually already said that we wanted to get rid of the blue frame however it's not easy because KDE from years and years and years ago was designed to have views uh, with the blue uh, frame around it you can get rid of the frame by changing color schemes but uh, it's a hacky way and to actually properly get rid of that blue frame you do need to make a pretty complex uh, merge request that it's in the in progress uh, but of course uh, it, it might take some time uh, the unnecessary separators are not actually unnecessary i mean it literally pointed to the separator between the title bar and the windows content and if you need one separator it's that one so i don't know yes. and it is completely amazing how those little details transform a pretty file manager to this crap you see I mean, I wouldn't call it crap. I agree that the frame can get in the way, but again, when it's gonna be what's this? when it's gonna be fixed, it's gonna be better. But I mean, crap is a strong word. And I'm gonna prove my point to you simply by setting an application style without separators. Yep. Hmm. I Which think that one? appearance grouping is also new. Anyway, yep. I'm gonna change the application style to lightly and nothing else. Just yeah, Lightly actually uses a shadow. It still has the concept of a view and it draws a shadow behind the views instead of a blue outline. Um, I think it also has maybe a hack to avoid that in Dolphin specifically, but it's a hack, obviously. What's that? Uh, Quantum also has a hack in that uh, particular way. And observe magic. So yeah, you can see that the view is still its own component and you just have shadow instead of an outline. Uh, having shadows for views is really not the way that Breeze does things. So we, we can just copy the concept as is on default Breeze. Just because the blue frame and the separators were gone, Dolphin looks like five versions. To be honest, it looks five versions backwards because everything else is broken. I mean, I mean you have this uh, 
sidebar on the left, which is blurry, pretty and everything, okay? And then you have this very thin line which casts a shadow on the sidebar and then you have also the view that casts a shadow on the separator and, and then you still have one separator here and now the toolbar is not connected to the title bar anymore. It just looks worse to me and honestly I think that the default sliders in Breeze are prettier than these ones. Ahead. We still have two problems though. The first is that the title bar has a different color from the rest window inactive. So I'll try to keep window inactive to see no, the best better. results. <laughs> and by the way, I tried to fix that from theme, but I believe it is bugged or something. Nah, there must be Anywho, a way to fix this. You changed the color scheme of the active title bar. The second problem is a blur on sidebar, because that could only work if the sidebar was consuming the full vertical space which yeah. is not the case here. But hopefully we can change that from yeah, settings. Should be, uh, we just need to set sidebars yeah. transparency to full opaque. Okay, and now let's reveal the fruits of our labor. And guys, just check how beautiful Dolphin actually is. If we get... I mean, I mean, I don't see that much of an improvement, breeze. honestly. It even rhythms. At all. Anyway, I'm letting you watch Speechless, because Amazon is charging me like there is no tomorrow. Am I going to get demonetized because I've that song? <laughs> Hopefully not. Anyway, that was everything for today, but uh, Baby Vogue, I'm not done with you. You've done more videos where you talked about, talked bad things about KD Plasma without any reason to do that, so I'm gonna get you. And by the way, also, thank you to everybody who donates to me, and I know that uh, now isn't the best time to actually ask for donations because of the uh, less videos by week compared to usual, but uh, still, I'm trying my best to actually keep the channel alive, so if you want to help out, well, donations are probably the best way but you can also do many other things I don't know subscribe and stuff like that uh, you can also ignore this video completely honestly <laughs> it's up to you you choose and um, as always thanks for watching and uh, see you tomorrow or the day after with a new video